this is everything you're gonna need to make the mini monster tech joystick mount the way it's designed it's gonna be like super solid it's, you ain't gonna worry about if it's gonna be strong enough trust me it's like I've already more or less tested it it's gonna be real solid this mount is the exact same mount that the uh, monster tech use on their on their massive one but this is gonna be like really solid you won't have to worry about strength and um, so this is you get a 140 inch aluminium bar what you're gonna do is cut it into four eight inch pieces and four two inch pieces so you can have four pieces like this four pieces like this I damaged this a bit when I was cutting it but it don't really matter it'll be okay you can just use a hacksaw to cut through these as well aluminium is pretty soft so there's no special tool, tools that anyone's going to need to, to to copy this anybody can copy it so you need these two bolts I'll put text in the description to better describe like the dimensions of all these two of these these are thicker these are the only thick ones that you need the rest are the same same thickness two of these four of these type And these are like the good T nuts, what they're called. I'll put all the information about them in the description. This slide inside here. Yep, so that's it. And they're going to attach just like that inside there. Mini tech. But before we do that, we're going to attach the top plate Okay, so I'll put all the measurements on screen for all the cuts that you should have so far. The clamp you don't need to cut, so... Ignore these two holes, that was a miss. I did that by accident. This, this needs to be cut down here, it's going to be 7 centimeters thick. This is going to be the base where the joystick goes on to. these screws these
and the measurements of the screw inside here I'll put on screen and you know this is two inches so that's all you need I'm gonna cut this now and then I'll be back okay so I've got that piece cut I'll put all measurements on screen as I said so it'll be easy for you to follow along instead of me having to confuse you with numbers and stuff so what we have to do now is um, make two holes 38 millimeters apart on here and the same on here I'll show you how it all goes together so clamp that up solid So I tapped one of the holes, it's not very hard, it's pretty easy in fact. I didn't know how hard or easy it would be because I've never done it before but it is pretty easy. Hopefully I'll be able to explain as I'm doing it on this one how, how to do it. It's, it's easy to do and it's, it's not that easy to explain for some reason but it really is easy so I guess just grab your tool and try it and you'll feel it and you'll realise that it's easy, that's probably the best way. It's not a difficult thing. But to get started, they say just put some oil on the um, on the tapping tool to help distribute the heat and also help protect the tool as well. But I've got some actual oil was designed for it, but you can use any type of oil apparently, like um, car oil. Car oil works. But have a little look into it before you do it, but because you can, um, you could ruin the hole. But I guess if you ruin the hole. You can flip it around so you get a two test turns anyway so nobody's gonna have any problems you even if you ruin one you'll you realize you work it out so what i've realized is like you put it in and you put it in as if you just put in a normal screw and eventually it does bite a bit so then you're cutting in a new thread so as soon as it bites in a bit just just turn back straight away and it'll be loose there'll be nothing there'll be no you know like no resistance it'll be loose when you go back and then just go again and you'll hit that same point where you just was but then it goes stiff again as you cut a little bit further and then just go back again straight away but don't be tempted to go and keep cutting so see i've touched the point now i'm cutting in and i'll go back it's loose but then it gets stiff again and i'll recut the part like I've cleaned up my rubbish basically now it's all good I'll go forward again to the stiff part clean up your rubbish forward to the stiff just keep going same process like I said just have a go and you'll be able to do it it's not difficult There's a washer and a bolt on these size screws. You could um, get the exact same right size screws and you just have the screw flat onto there. But or if you really wanted to um, have it hidden, so you could like put a cap over there. You could just um, just drill this hole, drill this hole out um, as wide as that head. Oops, drill that hole as wide as that head and. Um, only like as deep as that head you need to go as well 
and then you'll be able to screw all the way in till it's hit completely hidden. So I'm just gonna just get them in place for now before I level it up. You can see from the bottom, I think. Hopefully I've showed a good enough angle you can see how it links in. Hopefully each one of my videos will have something useful inside it even if it's not put together like Hollywood video but like I said hopefully I'll get better at that as well. You don't you don't necessarily need to slide this in either because as you turn the screw they'll naturally find their position. Depending on how thick your desk is, depends on how, where you like, adjust this to. If you've got a super thick desk, then you're going to want really long, but nobody's desk is that thick, I don't think, but I guess somebody's is. You never know. Taking shape, she's taking shape. I hope you guys are getting a good view of what I'm doing, I'm not sure, but hopefully at least it's good enough for you to copy because so far it's pretty simple. We've cut the metal bars to length and we've tapped the holes on top of just one side of them. And we've attached the clamp you buy on its own with the four screws just completely nuts and bolts really so far apart from the tapping and then I just put these on which we haven't tightened yet <laughs> now the moment of truth to see if your measurements have all measured up Okay guys, so um these screws that I got turned out to be a tiny bit too long, only a tiny bit because I didn't really account for the fact that when you countersink it it's gonna go in a little bit more. So I didn't I didn't think of that so Ideally, the screw you don't want it to be any longer than um, 15 mil total. So make sure that's no longer than 15 mil, and you'll be okay. But um, these ones looked a lot better as well to me. I think they're closer to the aluminium as well, so um, they would have looked better. But I didn't want to wait to order other screws. I guess I could change it in the future, but just make sure that they're no longer than 15 mil, and you'll be okay. Well, make sure they're like at least 15 mil. Like um, these are probably about um, 13 mil, so in between there, like 15 mil, perfect. Um, as this is now, this is it's solid. This is already like. Basically from here you just connect your plate and even without this extra piece here it's still um, completely solid like there's no way this like really flexes or anything but um, the main reason I first added this plate was to because um, I had longer screws but 
never worked out anyway but this all will only reinforce the strength so now bef before you tighten these up I suggest you loosen these two because then it will be able to pull them like completely level so before you tighten them for loosen these two here but after this you'll never need to loosen these again so I should do and then just tighten these Should pull everything level. Yeah. And obviously, this is size enough to um, put like the T sixteen thousand and the CH stick. I figure if you can fit them two on, then most of the joysticks are smaller, but. If you was building this just for um, a war tug or something, you could make the plate like smaller from original. You can choose. You can choose the size how you want it. But um, I made this so it can fit any any size joystick on. That's it. Solid as a rock. It's done.